Hi everyone, I am Loli Jane, animal communicator and pranic healer to animals and their humans. I am here to talk to you about the cookie cutter approach for animals. But first I want to assure you that all is well and there are major solar flares, sunspots, coronal mass ejections going on. So if you feel very odd, I do too. I've been going through that and we will go through this together and we are going through ascension. I can assure you that's what you're feeling. You are not sick. Okay. So let's talk about the cookie cutter approach to animals. Um, so I, I've read a lot of blogs or listen to podcasts or posts from animal behaviorists and trainers who are great. They do great work out there. Um, but I've heard things said like if they have a certain behavior, for example, anxiety, that it all means the same thing for all animals. So if an animal has anxiety, dot, 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 this is what it means. I completely disagree with that approach. This is based on my personal experience as an animal communicator, talking to animals and seeing that anxiety could mean a world of different things as well as a lot of other behaviors. So we'll talk about some of the, what it could be behind them. Never, never, never approach it in a cookie cutter fashion, okay? It is not one size fits all. Your animal is not one, <coughs> excuse me, your animal is not one size fits all. So if an animal has a certain behavior, first of all, when we approach it as an animal communicator, um, if a client contacts me and says my animal is, uh, doing is this this and this I don't ask the animal why are you this this and this I ask the animal how are you feeling when you are doing these behaviors so I always get the behaviors from from the pet parent or the caretaker okay <coughs> I apologize for my cough today but we're having these crazy winds and as you know I love sitting under trees and doing um, you know, videos or whatever, but I could not today because the winds are crazy. So I have this little tickle in my throat, so I apologize. Um, so I wanted to get this out there because this is coming up a lot and people just assume one behavior is one thing. Okay, so let's talk about something. So when they, they come in and I do this um, communication session with them telepathically, I ask them, how are they feeling when they're doing these behaviors? I don't make a judgment. I don't say, why do you have anxiety? Or why are you angry? You know, some people will say my animal's angry. Well, what are the behaviors behind the anger? So it's n not a judgment call on our part, okay? That's, the, I think, the mistake that the trainers and the behaviors are making. They're making a judgment call that they have anxiety. They may not have anxiety at all, and we'll talk about that or depression or whatever. I'm just using anxiety as an example because I actually read that from a trainer. <clears throat> um, so it could be any kind of anything they're trying to tell you. It could be what, what looks like depression, what looks like, um, you know, really stressful ADHD kind of behavior. Um, they can't sit still. Um, their tail is going a certain way. Um, you know, any kind of behavior. Your, your dog is sad, it's sitting by the door, or it's not eating, or, or not just dogs, all animals. I'm sorry if I just say dog. I mean all animals, for all of you animal caretakers, lovers. Okay, your cat, your horse, your bird, your rabbit, your goat, your chickens, whatever. <laughs> I had Jackson chameleons and a dog and a cat. Okay, so I don't approach it with what we're judging as a label of what they have. You know, if you go to a therapist, you have this, take a medication for this. I don't call it something. I ask them why they are doing these specific behaviors 
and how they're feeling and they can share with me how they're feeling and a lot of times it's not theirs and we'll talk about mirroring there's a whole nother mirroring YouTube video that you can watch just type in mirroring Loli Jane um, and sometimes it's mirroring they are trying to show or tell you something okay this could go one of one or two ways so an animal is trying to show or tell you something you ask them how they're feeling and they'll say uh, I'm feeling they could say I'm feeling anxiety or I'm feeling sad why are you feeling this way when did it start you know we can figure out like something happened in the household or I, they can tell me um, you know my person just got a divorce and I feel sad with my person okay so it could be something that like turned it on all of a sudden it's not one size fits all it's not all dogs with anxiety or sadness are all the same okay it depends on what's going on in your home it depends on what's going on with the primary caretaker and also like if you have a family not just a primary caretaker but all of the caretakers everybody in the family um so they could be mirroring you so i ask uh why do you feel this way and they'll tell me why they feel this way and if they tell me i don't know the next question i ask is are you trying to show or tell your person something about their behavior and that's where we get into mirroring and like i said there's a whole nother youtube on this but they are mirroring your emotional state okay a behavior an animal behaviorist and trainer cannot tell you this they will tell you it's the animal it's the animal it's not the animal sometimes this is not all the time sometimes if they don't know where this feeling comes from they are in service to you in this lifetime and many other lifetimes as your and your and your your angelic force you know they are angels for you they come into your lifetimes to help you with your lessons and they will get in your face and hold up a mirror and show you what you're experiencing so you can go fix yourself you can go work on it you can go fix the anxiety you can go fix the sadness on your in your own life and guess what it will go away mysteriously in your animal the animal doesn't need the the treatment or the behavior change it's you that needs to see so you can work on yourself they're not doing it to to um, irritate you or harm you they're doing it to show you what it is that you need to work on right now if you're not getting it okay so that's that's when we go down the mirroring path if it is theirs again it's not one size fits all not cookie cutter <clears throat> so it could be um, behaviors uh, like let's just take the anxiety for example so the anxiety it could be something happened in the household somebody knew uh, you know something changed um they could be also empathically picking up your emotions not just the mirroring thing but also kind of sharing the emotions with you not 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 just showing you but sharing it with you and that's known as empathy and a lot of us humans do that with each other i'm an energy healer so i pick up all kinds of emotions that i think are mine they're not mine at all at all so a lot of animals kind of have empathy for you as well um, but it could be something that changed you know something um, palpable that changed in the family dynamic in the household or something it's not that if a dog exhibits anxiety it's one thing okay it's, I, I just want to stress that because I've heard that over and over again and I simply cannot buy into it I, I don't um, we as humans are not one size fits all you know that think about this just because you and a friend are experiencing anxiety or depression or whatever it is it's not because of the same causes it might be completely different causes right same thing in the animal world okay it could have been another animal was brought into the household and there's a hierarchical structure and they're making the animal's life a living hell you know telling them to 
leave now because I'm in charge. That happens. I mean, it's, I can't tell you the answer right now. If you're looking for an answer as to why my animal has a certain condition until I talk to them. That's the whole amazing and profound and therapeutic part of animal communication is if I do a session with an animal, I'm talking to them deeply about what they are feeling inside. And then I ask them, what do you need to feel a different way? Like I'll say, what do you need to feel happy? Or what do you need to not feel anxiety? What do you need from your person? Or what do you need to happen in the household to feel a different way? And whatever it is, I can pick the emotion, you know, the opposite of what it is. Um, and they can tell me, they can tell me, you know, animals are highly intelligent. They have a body innate, just like we do. Our body innate is like an AI piece of machinery. Okay, it's biological and it knows what it needs and it can tell you what it needs. So you listen to your body. We're gonna have a discussion on that. I'm also a dietitian, I'm a nutritionist, but I'm holistic. So we'll have a whole nother discussion on uh, eating innately or eating intuitively. Um, so you listen to your body, okay? This goes for humans too. But the animal knows what their body needs. So, you know, you ever see your animal go outside and eat grass when they need to you know, detox or vomit. Well, their body's telling them, I need to get something green right now with chlorophyll in it so I can clean my body out because I have a toxin in there. So that's just one example, but your animal knows what to do. It may not know labels, I need this medicine or I need this specific. I've had animals or clients, you know, their animals tell me, I need some oils rubbed in this area, but they can't tell me like the specific oils but I can pick the oil for them. But they're asking for something to be massaged into their fur, you know, uh, by hand, by touch, using hands. They know. So your animals, as you probably know already, I don't have to tell you this, highly, highly, highly intelligent, way beyond the credit that we ever give them. If you've watched my videos and followed me, you know. You know this, and you know this innately too. Okay, so that's just anxiety, for example. So let's take some other scenarios. <clears throat> Say they're like, just stopped eating, and they look kind of sad. So again, there could be a million different reasons for a million different animals. You know, there could have been something going on internally where um, it's, more of a clinical depression because of internal things going on. You know, like when the root chakra shrinks. If the root chakra gets small, and um, I'll talk about other things with uh, healing, and uh, some other chakras change, um, you're gonna have depression. And it could be coming from sharing it with the person, like I said, it could be happening to the person. So, um, we could talk about like different chakras. I'll do some videos on that, chakra balancing. Um, so it could be from you not getting something. Like for instance, they may be sort of mirroring something but not exactly, like there's something, some block that you have uh, in your life and they are kind of mirroring you in a way empathetically but you're not getting something so there's something that is now carrying on to them and they're feeling the sadness okay so like i said it could go down several pathways um or they are literally having a behavior that something happened they lost a mate or somebody another animal came into the household and they feel like you don't love them anymore like you don't want them they could feel like it's not their forever home anymore like you may get rid of them I've had a lot of animals tell me that um, I don't feel like my person wants me anymore I don't feel wanted because I got a brand new puppy they're playing with a puppy the other dog's older they can't play as much and the, the dog is like or the cat or the chicken whatever it's like I don't feel wanted anymore I don't feel like they're gonna keep me they might get rid of me 
you know, it could be that. I am just pulling straws right now, okay? I'm just, I, I don't guess when I do animal communication. I don't make these ridiculous guesses and give you that information. I actually ask the animal, okay? I'm just trying to give you some examples. <clears throat> um, let's see. Other emotions. So I see animals sort of with the ADHD. I want to call it ADHD because we know what that is. Well, ADHD isn't a real thing. That's, you know, a cookie cutter stamp where they give you medications. Okay. So, um, but we know it's lack of focus, right? So we all have lack of focus right now. And one of the reasons, FYI, is we are not grounded. Okay. There are bombardment of energies coming in. As I mentioned in the beginning, we are being smacked with sunspots getting bigger, with solar flares, with coronal mass ejections, with solar winds, with all kinds of stuff hitting the earth. Well, guess what? We're part of the earth. It hits us. It goes into our cellular level. It affects us. We become ungrounded, kind of spacey. I have felt like kind of spacey for about a month and a half now. And it, it's not like me. I'm like a really hard worker. I get in there, you know, I make things happen. I'm a Gemini, I'm, I'm Mercury, Quicksilver, things happen fast. Um, I have been hardly able to do anything like finishing projects or just not giving up. It's not like me. Like, and I have felt like completely ungrounded, like I'm flying away. So I've had to like, root ground myself this is really important um so sometimes your symptoms the human talking to you humans with the adhd okay sometimes you are just ungrounded that's all it is it's not that you need medication you are ungrounded you need to take your shoes off okay you can do this with your animal because your animal is experiencing some of the same symptoms. They may or may not be mirroring you. They may or may not be picking up um, your lack of focus and, you know, running around all over the place empathetically. It might be theirs. It might be for a cause. So I don't want to make a math statement. But you can do this exercise with your animal. So you take off your shoes. You stand on the earth. You pull the earth energy up into your body. You send the earth energy down like you have roots on the center of the bottoms of your feet. Those are called your soul chakras. Pretend you're growing roots out of the bottoms of your feet and your tailbone like a tripod stool and send it all the way into the middle of the earth, okay? Ground yourself. Take off your shoes every single day and step on the earth and especially if there's water around. If there's water around, you get negative ions. So you're getting negative ions from the earth, but the combination of the water and the earth establishes an electrical charge even more. And so that's what you get when you walk in the ocean. You're getting negative ions, which are the healthy, good ones that detox you. And they also ground you. And also if you walk on wet grass in the morning when there's dew, same thing when it's wet. So if your feet are slightly wet, but even if it's not, just take off your shoes. When you get home from work or before you go to work, stand on the earth, okay? You can ground on a lot of surfaces, but just not asphalt. You can ground on concrete, brick, wood, uh, on the actual ground, on sand, just not asphalt, okay? So if you live in an asphalt village, which I call, find another place to put your feet on the earth, okay? Um, so your animals, back to the animals, <clears throat> it's all related. <clears throat> so if they are experiencing what looks like lack of focus, running around, ADHD, going, going, going. Here's an example. <clears throat> I had a friend. I'm sorry, forgive me, friend. <laughs> I won't mention your name. I had a friend whose animal was chewing their tail going around chewing the chewing the tail, chewing the fur off, you know, big open wound for a long, 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 long. So she's treating it physically, of course, you know, and chewing the tail, chewing the tail, right? So she 
who shall remain nameless, you know who you are, I love you, <clears throat> has these, you know, lack of focus. Go, 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 go. Work, 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 work. ADHD to the nth degree, right? That I'm calling ADHD because you understand that word. Okay, so a lot. I mean, to the extreme where it's like you just want to sit her down and tie her down to a chair and say, meditate. Okay, so I talked to the animal and the animal's like, well, my person, you know, work, 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 work. So chew, 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 chew. I chew, 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 chew. She works, 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 works. Okay, you get it? So she was kind of mirroring and emulating her person. Not exactly, but until you have that communication session with me and you find out, um, it, 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 it is kind of laughable actually, you know? Because they really are helping us through our lessons in life and whatever it is we need to see. It's amazing. It's amazing gift of service to us. So thank your animals daily for being such a gift to you and such an amazing service, you know, to come incarnate with you in many other, many lifetimes. Uh, and they do, they come back many, many times and you can listen to my, um, my YouTube on soul animals and, uh, previous incarnations and all that stuff. And they come with us, just like our soul family. They're your soulmates. They just have fur or feathers or hoofs or whatever. <clears throat> and they help us with our lessons over and over and over again, okay? So they have been with you before. I can guarantee it. They're very rarely new. Sometimes um, they'll be new in the angelic form, you know what I mean? But most of the time they're your soulmates. Um, so they will help you and they want to show you, you know, just like the chasing the tail, chasing the tail, chasing the tail, and also chewing the tail, chewing the tail, chewing the tail. So guess what? Until that person, my friend who I love, learns about herself and goes, I need to, you know, do some calming things. Maybe I'll meditate, whatever it is. Um they are not going to stop chewing their tail. And if you go to an animal behaviorist, they're gonna say it, chewing the tail means this. Well, it has nothing to do with them, right? So it have to, if it has nothing to do with them, all the animal behavior and training and whatever it is you're gonna do only for the animal is not going to work. Because they love you, they're gonna continue to show you what you need to see on yourself, okay? So let's pick another emotion. Let's see. Um, so let's say they are overprotective. Okay. So again, overprotective animals to a behaviorist means a certain thing, right? Well, again, it may not be their issue. So what I've had uh, a lot of clients in cases are has to do with the past life sometimes i'm not saying this is always the case if an animal's overprotective it has to do with a lot of things um so sometimes it has to do with the past life for example i do past life regression with the human and the animal together um so we can fix it in that lifetime so bas basically if something happened in another lifetime, like say you got to the end of the lifetime and um, the animal passed or whatever, it could have been a human passed and said, you know, I did a terrible job. I did a terrible job. I didn't do good enough, you know, for my human, my human got killed or something happened. My human, you know, got injured or killed or something. I'm, I didn't do enough. I didn't. I have to do more in the next lifetime. I have to do more. I have to do more. So the next lifetime that they come in with you, they're going to be overprotective and you're not going to know why, where this is coming from until we discover this past life and talk to the, I can talk to the animal in that lifetime and the human and say, you don't need to bring this forward anymore. 
That was then, this is now. You don't need to bring this forward, no longer. Done, karma done. You served your purpose, it's done. And I can ask an animal in this lifetime, when I'm talking to them on, on a regular session, not a past life session, uh, what their sole purpose is, and they never forget. Humans cannot remember their sole purpose for the most part until things unfold for them where they follow a path. But animals, if I ask them that question, it's right there. They go, oh, my sole purpose is blah, blah, blah. Okay? So it might have to do with their sole purpose to protect you fiercely. Or it might have to do with a past life where they didn't do a good enough job and they have to, they're sort of overprotective. So when you step out of the house, they're like barking at every person and every animal. They won't let you near another animal, you know, etc. It could also be where they are picking up on your fears. Okay, so here's another example. <clears throat> um, uh, you're walking your dog outside of the house and the animal is very, very, very overprotective and doing the same thing. Barking, barking, you know, shielding you. Um, I used to have a dog, a white mini American Eskimo, and every time I would walk, my dog would do a zigzag in front of me. You know, like those police do on freeways, would not let me walk in front of him, okay? He would like block me. And I did past life regressions and found out. It was amazing, he came back as many, 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 many animals and was always trying to save my life because I got killed, okay? So, overprotective, okay? Um, so, sometimes when you go out, when you step out of the house, you might have fear, okay? A lot of us have fear right now. There's a lot going on in the world that we have a lot of, we have created a lot of fear and we have a lot of fear and anxiety about everything, right? Not just walk on your animal, but just fear. Fear lives in the kidneys. The seed of fear is the kidneys, okay? Fear and love are polar opposites, okay? So if you have love, and I'm not talking about romantic love, I'm just talking about love. If you have love and fear, they're opposite ends of the spectrum, okay? It's not love and hate. It's fear and love. So when you have fear, you cannot feel love, okay? They are mutually exclusive. So if you walk outside of your house and you have general, let's just say general fear, your animal is going to think, you know, your animal can hear your thoughts, okay? We've talked about this before. So your animal can hear your thoughts, and that's how telepathy works. Your animal can hear other animals thoughts that's how they mainly communicate that's how they communicate with you you may not hear them but they certainly hear every thought you have so if you walk outside of the house walking your your dog or your cat or whatever your horse <clears throat> um and you, all you fear feel is the emotion of fear and anxiety you know coming home from work or listening to the news or whatever well guess what your animal's gonna pick that up and they're gonna go oh i'm supposed to feel this way this is not a mirroring thing. This is not an, an empath thing. This is, your animal is in service to you. So if you tell them to feel a certain way by just sending those thoughts off and your animal's picking it up, guess what? You're literally telling your animal, I want you to feel fearful right now. And let's feel, let's feel, feel really fearful before we go on a walk. So that could be happening, honestly. Um, so, if you feel fear because you've been attacked by an animal or other animals out there, then that's valid. But, again, you want to tell or feel the emotion of what you want, not what you don't want. Let me say this five times over again in different ways. You want to show or tell an animal what you want, not what you don't want. What you want, not what you don't want. What you want, not what you don't want. And this doesn't mean verbalizing. This means your thoughts, because they can hear your thoughts. So you better get your thoughts corrected before you step outside your front door, okay? So, what I tell people, 
<clears throat> is before you walk outside and walk your animal, what you want to do is close your eyes for a minute and go into your heart and feel the feeling of love and safety. Love and safety, okay? That's all you need to do. Feel love, feel safe. Imagine what safe feels like. Imagine you have this beautiful light around you and you're shielded and anything bad happened. You have a beautiful golden pink light around you and you're perfectly shielded and feel the feeling of love and safety and sit there and do that for five minutes if you have to before walking outside that door. And I guarantee you, things will change. But you need, it's, it's hard to, it's easy to say to do that. It's a little bit hard to check your thoughts, okay? You really need to check the thoughts. This is really important. I'm gonna give you an example. Okay, so this is, uh, I'm writing, I was listening to like a, a, one of the seminars. I went to the Gurney Institute of Animal Communication. So I'm listening to one of the seminars and workshops that we had. So we finish and I'm like, okay, I've been sitting for three days. I need to go exercise. So I decided to go bike riding. So I'm living in, in Hawaii at the time. So I go bike riding <clears throat> and all of a sudden I see this cat like that is about to like get run over. Like it's about to go into the road and get smashed. And I slammed on my brakes because it actually was crossing in front of my bike. I slammed on my brakes and had to muster up all the energy in the world to silently, because I didn't want to verbalize, I wanted to send this bam, direct thought into this animal because we had a split second here. This really direct thought into this animal. So I closed my eyes tightly and directed the thought to the animal to not don't run into the road because that is the negative. They don't want to understand negatives. I couldn't say or think, don't go into the road, you're gonna be run over because guess what? They would have turned around and done that. I had to muster up all the energy and focus my thought for a second in move to the safe side of the sidewalk. Instead of don't dot dot dot, you're going to say what you want, okay? Don't run into the road and get run over is what you don't want and they will do it if you say that because they don't understand not they don't understand don't there's no negatives in the universe okay we that's our language that's not theirs okay that could be a whole nother youtube which i think will be my next one okay so you have to tell them what you want and if it's not verbalized that's even better. So close your eyes. I have to close my eyes when I, when I do this because it, for some reason, focuses my thought. Close your eyes and show them an image of being safe. That's what I did. I showed them an image of being safe away from the cars, away from the sidewalk, away from the bikes. And that, it was the most amazing and shocking thing I've ever witnessed. So when I did that, I mean, we're talking split seconds here, not minutes. When I did that focused, that cat literally backed up and went in reverse. And I've never, I've never seen a cat walk backwards like this. Like all four paws went in reverse from the road. I was like sh shocked and amazed. It was amazing. Okay. I had another case. I don't. Um, so I had another case where I, I helped locate lost animals. So this is early on in my animal communication career. You, you learn stuff everywhere, you know. This is a big, huge lesson for me. So um, I had a mentor. I'm going to be teaching animal communication, and I'm going to be mentoring because that's really important. My mentor shared this with me. So... Um, so I, I locate lost animals and I find out, you know, if they're where they are and what it looks like around them, if they're in a house, if there's what the house looks like, the outside, the inside, if there's children, if there's toys around, if there's vehicles around, you know, what the neighborhood looks like, all that stuff. I get details. So I got these explicit details and 
the animal was alive because that's the first thing I do is check and see if the animal's alive. So the animal's alive and explained all of these details of, you know, where it is and who's feeding it and blah, blah, blah. So the person, after I talked to the person, even said, oh yeah, I know where that house is. It's like three doors down from me, blah, blah, blah. And then she found her animal run over. And she didn't believe that I actually talked to the animal, but I can assure you I did because I did check that they were alive. And number two, I had explicit details, which she confirmed. So what happened was the animal was on, on its way home, was running home because I was sending it home and I um, did, not, did not know to do this, okay? So I was sending the animal home and then the animal got hit by a car on the way home. So where it got hit was on the way home. Um, so I learned that before I ever send an animal home, you know, sometimes they're not lost. Sometimes I know how to get home. I always tell them, I don't say don't get hit by a car because I don't understand. Don't, I don't say, you know, uh, anything in the negative. I, I say, stop before crossing the street, look both ways before crossing the street and make sure there's no vehicles or crossing the sidewalk and make sure there's no vehicles. And they'll say, okay, I can do that. Okay, so big lesson to me. Like from then on, I did that. So that's how you have to approach an animal, okay? So, but back to the, what we were talking about, the different emotions. So never, 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 never let anybody in the animal um, you know, business ever tell you that it's one size fits all or it's a cookie cutter because it never is. It's always very specific to what your soul animal is trying to bring for a lesson for you or something going on in the household or something going on in the dynamic of the family or you personally, or there is something physically going on with the animal where it's affecting them emotionally that that could be um but it's always very individual okay so i just wanted to do a youtube on this and i hope and pray that we all move forward together as one world okay and an ascended world okay so watch this video um my website is animals-speak.com animals- or a hyphen speak.com and i look forward to doing sessions with all your beautiful animals and i'm going to be doing podcasts in the near future and i love you and namaste